too young to feel old. I have to wear glasses now. And I hate wearing glasses. And it's not a vanity thing either. Well, maybe some. It's just those cockamamie little pieces of glass between me and a book. I think it's literary alienation. Now that I have to wear the damn things, I can see my lipstick, you know, coming up in all these little teeny lines around my mouth. That's the worst part about smoking. That's what the Surgeon General should put on those billboards. Warning, smoking eats up the collagen layer around your lips and you end up looking like a drawstring bag with teeth. Of course, I, I could just stop wearing lipstick. It's just, I'm so pale, you know. Now I can't go out in the sun and get real color anymore because of the damn hairspray. See, there really is a hole in the ozone layer. They just trying to get us all paranoid about nothing. Speaking of which, you, do you think I'm paranoid? I mean, I must have a label by now. What do you have me filed under? O. O? For O'Neill. Living in time and feeling every moment. Do I walk into tomorrow and never look behind? In a perfect world, everyone's dreams would all come true. What will the future hold? I wonder. How will it all unfold? I wish I knew. Ooh, I wish I knew. How do you turn on the jacuzzi? You go to somebody else's backyard. <laughs> Where did you get this thing? Came with the house. <laughs> oh, man, 95 degrees this time of year. Okay, mm. something's wrong. Global warming. Maybe it's time to start that ice cream diet. Mmm, sounds good. Another 10 pounds are gonna have to weigh me on the scale at SeaWorld. Oh, at least you've got an excuse. Look at these varicose veins. I'm not even 40, and my legs look like mom's. You're lucky. I got dad's legs. I think I should go on a vacation with Steve. Why not? He wants to take me river rafting in Wyoming. <laughs> I'll be damned if I'm let him see me in a bathing suit. Rosie, hasn't he seen you in a lot less? That's different. Oh, I look better in a lot less. <laughs> about him. <laughs> like what? You know. Oh, come on, Rosie. Give a pregnant gal a break. Last time I had sex was 15 pounds ago. Well, let me put it this way. The last time we had sex, I lost 15 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so when do I get to meet Mr. Endurance? Never. Well, I don't know when I'm ready. It's it's not you, it's me. He's, he's, uh, he's a little younger than I am. Well, how young is he? Younger. Youngish. He's young enough. When he was born, I was pledging Pi Pi in my freshman year of college. Wow. This is not what I thought I'd be worrying about when I was 43. <laughs> and if you say one word to anybody, I'm gonna say you lie. <laughs> He's already been convicted of rape twice and arrested and let go three other times for lack of evidence. I know that. I read the files. I know that. That's why I asked you to meet me here. So? So, what do you think? Oh, I think your client's not a nice guy. <laughs> and that's on paper. 
And Percy he's a real charmer, too, isn't he? Huh. Prince, where do you want to start? His record, all I want is never to have been assigned this case. You're Catholic, right? So? So? There's always prayer. joke. The judge set a bail figure higher than the national debt. I'm telling you, God could not have gotten this creep out on bail. The guy wears a mask. That's his M.O. right on his prior rape conviction. <laughs> and guess what the police find in his apartment when they go in with a search warrant? A mask. Yeah. Now I'm asking you... Hey, you mind? I'm trying to work. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. No, I mean my work. I'm trying to do my work. Oh, well, excuse the hell out of me. What happened to Ben's fraternity philosophy? Nothing. We help each other. You know, asking for help. You're, you're kvetching. Like you're the only one with a caseload or something. I mean, maybe in Beverly Hills you have your, your paralegals that you hire to sit and listen to your crap, but not down here. I mean, this is different. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you want to kvetch, you do it the proper place at the proper time, all right? And just where might that be? I don't know, anywhere, at your, at your mother's, at your sister's, in your bathtub, uh, with your with shrink, or go to Kohl's like everybody else. I don't care. Just don't bring it in here. All right? Rosie, at least once a week, I try to explain to your mother that I am not your personal secretary. This information continues to fall on deaf ears. Could you straighten her out? Perhaps tonight, at her gallery benefit, at 7, and she'd appreciate it if you could be on time. in the car I mean, we were leaving weren't you i've seen better street art you like this no but i know it's good come on there's someone i want to introduce you to i'd like you to meet george and dorothy's son william this is my eldest daughter fiona rosie the elder your mother has told me all about you <laughs> i doubt it well i um i think you two have a lot in common William's a corporate counsel with Second Security Trust. Ah! Oh. Who are you with these days? Anybody who asks. I'm a public defender for the county of Los Angeles. Central felonies. Ah. Could you excuse us for just one moment? Mother, we'll be right back. First of all, I no longer practice corporate law, as you well know. Second of all, any embarrassment you may feel in front of your friends about what I do for a living is your problem. And third of all, I can't help but notice that everybody in this room is over 65, with the exception of me and William. I'm 64. You're trying to fix me up. I thought you might appreciate a little culture. Mother, you hate this stuff even more than I do. You said it looks like finger painting. Well, it's for a good cause. What, me? I just thought it would be nice to have someone for you to, you know, to, to, to what? To talk to, be with. What is so terrible about being alone? You've been alone since Daddy died. I mean, do you feel so terrible? Yes. dinner out one night this week? Just a couple of lonely old ladies? What about your schedule? It's my problem. Do I have a date? It'd be lovely. In the meantime, how about some nice hors d'oeuvres? I had them make that smoked salmon and caviar that you love. 
You underwent psychological counseling in prison. So? What can you tell me about it? Bunch of crap. Why? I'm incurable. It's like being a drunk. Alcoholism may be incurable, but it is controllable. Maybe I uh, don't want to control it. What did your therapist think, uh, Dr. Blanchett? Have you talked to her? No, should I? Who oh, cares? She'd just give you a pile of garbage about my mother. <laughs> you have a mother? My mother was on fire. It wouldn't spit on the flames. The DA has a pretty strong case against you. The mask is a unique M.O. Cindy Blair described it in detail to the police. The hell is Cindy Blair? The rape victim. Oh, that thing. Hmm. Why the mask? It's something to remember me by. Don't do that. Don't get that look in your eyes. I hate it. What's her name? Um, had that look in her eyes uh, the night that I did her. Raped her? Raped her. What? What? What did you think? Did you think I was going to deny it? Huh? What I think is not an issue. All I want is to gather information to assist me in formulating a defense. It's your right and it's my occupation. You just think you're a hard ass. You, you think you're as good as any man. Hell, you even have a man's job. But you're a woman. That's all. You're just a woman. You're just nothing. And if I had you out on the street, I'd prove it to you. You were Gilbert Lawner's therapist for six months in Vacaville, Dr. Blanchett. As I told you on the phone, Miss O'Neill, I don't have any information for you. All I'm looking for is a little insight. I'm late for my next class. He must have told you something about himself in all that time. <sighs> Look, Miss O'Neill, I know you're only doing your job, but frankly, I have neither the time nor the inclination to talk to you about Gilbert Lawner. Why not? I'm not interested in helping you put that man back on the street. I'm not asking you to. All I want is a little information. Well, he's not innocent, I can tell you that. Well, he's innocent until proven guilty. Surely he confessed to you. You know I can't tell you that. You don't have to. He rarely lies about it. He delights in other people's reactions, especially women's. I've never had a client make me feel this way. He really scares me. He scared me, too. Imagine seeing 15 of them a day for nine years. Maybe that's why I retreated into my ivory tower. Is he insane? Not legally. 
He appreciates the criminality of his acts and conforms his conduct to the requirements of the law. That is the definition, isn't it, Counselor? And later. He's a very sick individual, Miss O'Neill. I'm not sure there's anything that you or anyone else can do to help him. Had you been drinking? No. Taking drugs? No. Look, I'm trying to create a defense here, Gilbert. Now, your army record is not commendable, and your rap sheet's rather lengthy. I need to establish something for us to go on, or you're up for a hefty sentence. So, if you were either under the influence of drugs or alcohol, I need to know. Now, you really think that's gonna help? If it's true. This is, this is pathetic. You're no lawyer. Who'd you sleep with to get this job? Hey, you wanna trade me in for a male version? Be my guest. I'll give you the phone number, too. Oh, you'd love that, wouldn't you, huh? You get to forget all this, you get to forget me. You're gutless. Oh, what are you gonna do? You gonna cry now? Don't get your hopes up. You have five seconds to either replace me or answer my questions. I don't drink, and I don't do drugs. You're just a regular Boy Scout. Slaughter guy as bad as he sounds? Worse. You wouldn't want to run into him at a mall at lunchtime, which was a dark alley. Come on, let's get out of here, all right? We'll get a fresh start in the morning. Parked out back? Yeah. I'm going this way. Night, Barbara. Night, Rosie. See you tomorrow. Okay. Would you mind giving me a ride to my car? Sure. Thank you. Hiya, Fiona. Fiona? This is Ed Carusi. Your mother gave me your number. Hey, I ran into her at the club. I'm a tax attorney. She said we had a lot in common. I don't know, maybe we could go sailing sometime. I've got an 18-footer and a slip down at the marina. Give me a call. Hey, your mother showed me your picture. I'm partial to girls with blue eyes. My service number is 555-2376. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye forever. Damn it, mother. stepmother are you anyway? You know, I've been calling for hours. I'm an ex-stepmother who works her butt off and who just walked through the door. Well, at least you're home. You smell kind of like dead fish. Just had the worst date of my entire life. 
Why, what happened? Nothing. I'm just totally grossed out. If these dorky friends of Nina's made us go grunion hunting, so as a result, I just spent the last hour and a half running around the beach picking up slimy fish. How well do you know these guys? I just met them tonight. They're these stupid swimmers from Mission Viejo. Well, I don't think you should be going out with guys you don't know. Nina knew them. That isn't the point. You didn't. You put yourself in a very vulnerable position. You know, anything could have happened on that beach. You're lucky the only thing that got grabbed was fish. Lighten up, Rosie. They weren't scamming on us. Well, don't they teach you anything about date rape in school? Oh. Well, it happens, you know, all the time. Well, you're in a great mood. What's the matter? Dad call? had a rough day, that's all. So does your mother know you're here? She's got a board meeting tonight. So why don't you call her and I'll get you a clean shirt? I'm not taking you home smelling like a bait shop. I know that, but Mom, look. Okay, okay, well, hold on a second. Rosie's got a call. Rosie's bar and grill. Oh, Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, she's here. Hold on one second. Mom, I gotta go. M Mom. Mom, I gotta go. Rosie's bringing me home. Mother, don't you ever give out my name and number to anybody. What? She is? Well, of course I want to be there. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. All right, bye. Come on. Dr. Miller, line 118, please. Dr. Miller, line 118. Well, she's been very busy. You still look pregnant. I am. It's Aunt Fanny. You want to talk to her? Not for anything in the world. Please. Mother, I came to see Dory. She says she hasn't talked to you since your confirmation. Fine, I'll call her tomorrow. Yeah, yes, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Todd. How you doing? Just great, Rosie. Todd, can we go home now? Just two more minutes. This is the bad part about having a husband who's a sports doctor. There's always a game. Honey, I'm a little tired. Can you see what's keeping the wheelchair? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. I just want to see how Braxton's leg would hold up. I'll be right back. How are you doing, Kim? Hey. So, so, we were at the game. I started having contractions at the end of the first quarter. I told Todd I could hold out till halftime. Way to go, sports fan. But when the contractions started coming five minutes apart, I dragged him out of there. I thought I was gonna give birth by the hot dog stand. False alarm. It's never coming out. That's what I said about your sister. She was three weeks late. Have I ever done anything right? Hi, Charlotte. Hi. Does anyone smell fish? Gilbert Lawner is scum with a capital S. I wouldn't even be talking a deal if the victim was in any kind of emotional shape to testify. So you're telling me you don't have a witness? I'm telling you, I have a witness who's been severely traumatized and would prefer not to relive the horror of the crime. So you're telling me you don't have a witness? I'm telling you. I don't want to put her on the stand so you can rip her flesh off in public, but I will if I have to. Up to you. Okay, I'm listening. Between the rape, the robbery, the assault, and his prior convictions, he could pull a maximum sentence of eternity. I'm willing to drop the rape and recommend eight years. The only better deal you could get would come with a sunroof and a cash rebate. You just saved the taxpayers some money.
Eight years concurrent, which with your record is a Christmas present. Uh-huh. That's their deal. I suggest we take it. Oh, hold on. What am I out as a trial? Not too good. They have a valid warrant plus a reliable informant who says he saw the mask in your apartment approximately three weeks before the crime. That's crap. Because? Because I was out of town until the week before. Because nobody comes to my apartment. Ever. Hard privacy. This informant is the key to the prosecution's case. Are you telling me the truth? A fair question, all things considered. If I didn't lie to you about rape in the broad, why would I lie to you about this? I don't know why you'd do anything you do, Gilbert. Nobody came to my apartment. Now, what are we going to do about this? So, so, if I can get this psychiatric evaluation introduced as evidence, I'm gonna try and sell a duress defense. Because if he really believed this guy was trying to shoot him, then so will a jury. I like that. I knew he would. Ooh, pink. It's a smart color, gets people talking. I always wear a pink shirt during cross-examination. Good thinking. I've got some good news, and I've got some good news. Which do you want first? Mm, the good news. I just took a deal on Gilbert Lawner. Assault and robbery, eight years. Nice going. What's the good news? He says there is no informant. Not exactly a person to be believed, but I'm having Pete investigated on the long shot. That's good, too. So why is it you look so bad? I hate him, Ben. Well, you can hate them or you can love them, but still, you do your job. I'm doing my job. That's good, Rosie. Because if we lay down in cases like this, we might as well close shop. What? What is this? Are we going to have a discussion about representing guilty people? Because you made your decision about that the day you came in here. I know my moral imperative, Ben. It's my intestines that are staging a coup. Your intestines are irrelevant. I mean, you don't defend this guy to the hill. The Cossacks may just oh, as well come. about the Cossacks. I don't want to hear any more about the Cossacks. Well, you're going to hear about the Cossacks, because we live in a society that, given half the opportunity, yeah, yeah, would... Yeah, would lock half the population in jail and commandeer the other half to guard them. I know. That's right. And before you slough off any more of my historical references, do you even know who the Cossacks were? They massacred innocent Jews in Tsarist Russia. I saw a fiddler on the roof. Rosie, the concept is unbridled state discretion. Uh, do you know where all this stuff begins? They don't start with book burnings and executions. They build their way up. Little by little, they erode individual rights until you end up with a fascist state. That's why you have to be willing to defend the guilty in order to protect the innocent. I know that. So what's the problem? I just want to feel better. You want to feel better? Why didn't you say so? Here, have some ragalach. I know what you're going to say. Kimberly, are we going to go through this every night? We had another fight. She told me I couldn't date during the week. It's not fair. I do all my homework. She's a tyrant. I mean, Nina goes out on school nights. Her mother doesn't care. Her mother doesn't care about a lot of things. Kim, you have to go home. You can't stay here. And you can't keep showing up at my door. You understand? Yeah, I understand. 
You don't give a damn about me anymore. Oh, don't be silly. Silly? I spent practically every weekend of my life with you. Well, that was different. Why? Because I was just your husband's kid. You know that is not true. Well, then is it Steve? <laughs> I haven't seen Steve in over a week. Well, then why are you taking it out on me? Dad's the one who's divorcing you, not me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, Grace. Yes, I'll bring her home. First thing in the morning. Hi. You know, one can spend an entire lifetime doing nothing but investigating those questions. Unless one's already busy defending the principles that allow people to express themselves so freely. Sounds like a hell of a good job to me. Yeah. So, Rosie, can I give you a lift? I think you just did. Thanks. And they were all that way? Every building was worse than the next. All you gotta do is light a cigarette and bingo. Instant inferno. Good, because Ruiz is no arsonist. I didn't trust that landlord from day one. Well, that's pretty cut and dried. Afternoon, Ms. O'Neill. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are having a two-for-one sale. Can I interest you in something surprising? What'd you find? Lana told you the truth. Nobody came to his house? No, I traced the mask. He bought it on the 23rd of last month. But the informant claimed to have seen it on the 2nd. Exactly. Well, you know, he didn't have some similar mask at his house, and that's what the informant saw. No, they're distinct. Carnival type, bird feathers, kind of grotesque. One of a kind. And the guy who makes them down in Venice remembers Lana making the purchase. So their reliable informant was invented by the cops? Cop. Singular. Prosecutorial misconduct any way you look at it. Yeah, that division's clean. But there is this one guy I've been known to get a little overzealous. He had a hunch it was Lonner, fit his M.O. to a T. And hell, he was right. So what if he was right? L.A.'s still part of America, even for Lonner. Yeah, every PD in L.A. We examine every case this guy's ever worked on. <sighs> Real Pandora's boxy. See you later. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks. Well, congratulations. Looks like you got enough to suppress. Without the informant, no warrant. Without the warrant, no mask. Without the mask, no case. What the hell's the matter with you? Skip it. I'll fetch to myself. Oh, well, I'll make an exception this time. Come on. Come on, what's up? Got what I needed to get the charges dropped. Mm-hmm, and? Gilbert Lawner's released, he'll probably rape again. Yep. Yes, Judith, then. For the day? All right, first thing in the morning, tell her Rosie O'Neill called. It's urgent. He says if it doesn't happen this week, he'll induce labor on Monday. Thanks for bringing me, Rosie. Todd tried to get out of going to Seattle with the team, but his partner couldn't cover for him. It's no problem. I love doing this. Did Todd seem a little low-key to you the other day? Hmm. 
course not. You know how doctors are. You have to be half dead to get their attention. I guess so. He's been depressed ever since the amnio. He really wanted another boy. Why, so he can start his own team? <laughs> I'm sorry. My hormones are out of control. I'll be 56 when she goes to college. <laughs> You're going to be 56 whether she goes to college or not. Just when I finally had time to take some extension classes. Doreen, you're hardly going into indentured servitude. <sighs> you and Todd can afford help, and I'll help babysit. <laughs> What? I appreciate that, but you don't have the time to get your legs waxed, much less clean projectile vomit off the walls. Well, to be honest with you, the way things are at work right now, it sounds pretty appealing. I'm about to let a rapist back out on the streets. Why? The cops falsified a warrant in order to search my client's apartment. So because of that, the case will probably get thrown out. Just on a technicality? <laughs> Well, it isn't just a technicality. I mean, look, I hate this bastard, but you can't let the cops go wild. Doreen, this is what I call Rosie, I really respect what you do, but I just don't want to hear about it right now, okay? Okay. So, have you got everything unpacked? This is Morrison. The doctor will see you now. Thanks, bud. Uh, how about a chocolate milk? You got it. Hard and sugar. You might as well inject them straight into your heart. You Corn go. syrup, sugar, partially hydrogenated soybean and cottonseed oil, soy lecithin. Come on, man. You gotta eat it or introduce it to your mother. Is that it? You don't understand. My system is in perfect balance. One wrong ingredient and I'm up all night. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. If I'm gonna be up all night, it ain't gonna be because of some candy bar. Water and a plain yogurt. So, Hank. When are you going to loan me that search and seizure file? I get the prelim on the drop case tomorrow. Got it right here. Good. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, what was it worth to you? Yeah, my first horn. Well, oh, I can't wait that long. <laughs> Join me? Oh, uh, no. Come oh, on, that's good. Oh. Hank, I hadn't had sugar in five years. Yeah, well, you want that file? Eat it. <laughs> it's your client. Everybody's got their price. See you in the trenches. <laughs> Pink, huh? Smart color. It gets people talking. we're doing out here? We're talking about Gilbert and Lana. You missed that boat. As far as I'm concerned, the next time we talk about that case, we'll be in trial. I don't think so. What does that mean? You have a fictitious informant. What are you talking about? I can establish to the judge that the police obtained that search warrant fraudulently. Like hell. Your so-called informant allegedly told the police that he saw that mask in Lana's apartment approximately three weeks before the rape occurred. <laughs> Unfortunately, Lana didn't even buy the mask until the day before the rape. And it's one of a kind. I think you better check your police sources. Seems they got a little creative on this one. Doesn't it bother you that he'll be back out there brutalizing women? Oh, that's a cheap shot, Judith. Doesn't it bother you the reason he'll be back out there is because some overzealous cop took the law into his own hands? 
You know, I became a DA because I wanted to be one of the good guys. Now I have to tell Cindy Blair that the man who raped her is going free because the good guys blew it. The good guys didn't blow anything. That cop is no good guy. I'm sorry. So am I. I gotta go make some phone calls. What else? That's it. You're about to be a free man. Hmm. Hey. The LAPD, the DA's office, Cindy Blair's family, and anyone else who's watched the 6 o'clock news lately is not real happy about the dismissal of your charges. You're a walking target. And I can't say that that bothers me. Hey, you got me out. Exact same shot in 1956. Yeah, but I bet he kept his eyes open. Well, I'll be damned. Rosie, welcome. Thanks. Uh, you know, that's not really necessary. The residual smoke in here is equivalent to half a pack. All you gotta do is breathe deep. I prefer my own. Are you thirsty? Because Ben is buying. She'll have a white wine. Bourbon neat water back. Thanks. You're up, Ben. Let's go. Excuse me, it's time for me to show him how to really play this game. <laughs> good luck showing him anything. I'm not gonna let you ruin my good time. Hey, you're the one who told me to come here. Oh, I did? Yeah, to fetch. Yes! <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead and do it then. Get it over with so we can all relax. Rosie, you are always welcome here. Then I feel lousy. Here. Got you double water. Helps to flush the alcohol from your system. You know, people take their livers for granted. So, um, what do you feel lousy about? Gilbert Launer's back on the street. Thank you, Rosie O'Neill. Yours, Jeff. Rosie O'Neill, you believe in due process. <laughs> Unfortunately, one reactionary member of the police force doesn't follow due process. And that is a criminal act. You exposed a crime with major repercussions. The PD in the country wait their whole career for a chance to do that. You've been here, what, three months? I know that. This guy is sick. Now, who the hell do you think you were going to be defending? Only the nice ones? Where do you draw the line, Rosie? Who are the ones that's OK for you to dirty your hands over? You don't choose your clients here. They choose you. This is not Beverly Hills. You know, I've had it with the Beverly Hills crap. Believe it or not, there are people dedicated to what they do who do not come from the ghetto, you elitist son of a bitch. You're worse than any snob in my mother's club. Yeah, well, I couldn't get in your mother's club, so you kissed my ass. Besides, you're the one whose heart's bleeding all over the floor about this, this case of yours. What, you never felt bad about defending someone? You ever felt bad about anything, Hank? Yeah, I have. <laughs> and I got the ulcer and the, the busted marriage and a thousand nights like this to prove it. Anybody ever hear of the one about um, Thomas Jefferson telling James Madison about the need for a Bill of Rights? Hmm? 
Well, he said that if you sacrifice a little bit of liberty in the name of law and order, you deserve neither, and you lose both. To Thomas Jefferson. To Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. To the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights. To your daughter, to your niece. You look tired. So do you. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready to trade my silk blouses for spit-up stained sweatshirts. It gets harder when you get older, you know. Oh, come on. Once you smell that sweet baby skin, you're going to be hooked all over again. Mm. I always did like the feel of a baby sleeping on my shoulder. Newborn visiting hours are over in five minutes. Would everyone except fathers please clear the floor? Five minutes, please. That's me. I guess I better get over and see her. I'll see you later. Bye. Am I spaced? What's her name? Rose. 